Hello, everybody, and welcome to the last subsection of the last module. We're almost finished. Now we're going to be looking at a couple of things that are familiar. We're taking our knowledge of multiple linear regression combined with our new knowledge of dummy variables or categorical variables, and we're bringing those together to deal with a problem that we have already dealt with in a different way, and that is these ANOVAs, these uh, analysis of variance, or these different experimental designs that we looked at in module 13. Feels like so long ago now. So here I'm taking the same problem from module 13, and we're going to deal with this problem using our multiple linear regression with dummy variables knowledge. So we're working with a data set from exercise 13-1D. I've got it here as well. I'll show it to you in just a minute. We're, in that problem, we're looking at students um, in different majors who are always complaining or bragging about how difficult their field of study is relative to another. So you decide we can probably use the number of hours spent studying as a proxy for level of difficulty. The longer you study, the more difficult it must be, or maybe you're just a little bit slower, but let's assume that it's a valid proxy that the longer you study must be a more difficult course. So you survey students across three fields and you ask them how many hours per day they study. And we're going to use regression analysis to estimate this regression equation. So it looks maybe a little bit familiar, similar notation. It looks like any other multiple linear regression, except here we don't have any continuous variables. We have only dummy variables, only categorical variables. Now, to remind you what the data set looked like, let's just skip past all of this. So here's that original problem, 13.1D. And so here we can see we had our three different majors, accounting, physics, and sociology. And here, let's just remind ourselves of those sample means that we were working with. And in that problem, recall, we had a null and alternative hypotheses where the null hypothesis was that the average for accounting is the same as the average for physics, is the same as the average for sociology. And the alternative, of course, is that not all are equal, or at least one of them was different, right? So this is what we have already done using that analysis of variance methodology. Now, up here, we have this regression model that, as we can see, has only two categoricals. Well, why is that? Remember, we have k equals three categories. We have accounting, physics, and sociology. So like any other model that incorporates dummy variables, the number of dummy variables is k minus one, because there's always that base case scenario against which we compare the other levels of the categoricals too. So in this exercise, we define accounting to be our base case. Then the second variable of physics is physics students and sociology students. So here we have our output. Now, before we get into this output, let's just discuss a little bit how this works. So when we're looking at the expected number of hours, so the average number of hours. Our model looks like this. Beta 1 physics, beta 2 soci. Now, we have defined our categoricals. So I have something that looks like this, and then I have accounting, I have physics, and I have sociology. And we have defined accounting as our base case, physics is physics, sociology is sociology. Relatively straightforward definitions. So when we take this and, and we transfer these definitions over to our model, well then what that means is that the expected hours or if we put this into a, a familiar ANOVA type of notation, well, that average number of hours, that's mu A. And if we're looking at a, a accounting, 
Well, then physics is zero, sociology is zero, which means mu a is given by beta zero, which means that x bar a must be given by b zero, is that point estimate of the population average number of hours that the accounting student spends studying. Now, if we look at the same for physics, so that would be mu p for physics, well, now I have this dummy variable it takes on the value of 1. Sociology is still 0. So that means that the average for physics is going to be denoted beta 0 plus beta 1. So beta 1 is really a difference value. It's telling us the difference in the average number of hours that physics students spend studying relative to the base case. So that means that x bar physics is going to be b0 plus b1. Again, b1 is that difference value. It's the same as the other uh, dummy variable models that we looked at, where the coefficient on the dummy variable tells you the difference in the average between that level of interest of the categorical, in this example we're talking about physics, relative to the base case. If next I look at sociology, mu s, that's going to be beta 0 plus beta 2. So x bar sociology is going to be b0, b2. Okay, so we've got our model. We understand it in terms of some of that similar notation that we've worked with. Now, how can we transfer this to what we already understand from our previous studies of ANOVA, where, again, remember that null hypothesis is that mu A is equal to mu B is equal to mu C. Let's just focus on that null hypothesis first. Well, if we dissect this, and this is kind of thinking in terms of a Fisher's LSD type of exercise, not quite the same, but along those same lines. If, if we break apart this null hypothesis, and if we say, okay, well, let's first look at mu A and mu B. If those two are equal, well then, if I come back up here to what I've already defined, well, here's mu A and here's mu B. So if mu A is equal to mu B, well, there's mu A, and mu B is defined as beta 0 plus beta 1. Well, this implies then for mu A to be equal to mu B, in other words, the average for, why do I have B here? That shouldn't be B, that should be uh, physics. I pulled it up because for some reason I put B and C here, that's physics and that's sociology. So for accounting to be the same as physics, well, that implies beta 1 equal to 0. If accounting is equal to sociology, well, there's accounting, and here's sociology, right? For those two values to be equal, well, that implies beta 2 is equal to 0. And then finally, the third one, if we now compare physics with sociology, well, physics we know is beta 0 plus beta 1. That would be equal to beta 0 plus beta 2. Those cancel out. And so this is equivalent, let me write it in a similar manner, this would be equivalent to beta 1 equal to beta 2. So if we break this down into these 
different comparisons, which is just dissecting that null hypothesis. If the null hypothesis is true, and those three means are equal, then in our regression analysis, it must be the case that beta 1 is 0, beta 2 is 0, and beta 1 is equal to beta 2. Well, where do we see that in our regression output? Beta 1 is equal to beta 2, and both of them are equal to 0, right? That's what I'm... I'm just rewriting all of these. Beta 1 is equal to 0, beta 2 is equal to 0, and they're equal to each other. So if they're equal to each other and they're equal to 0, well, haven't we seen something like this before? This is the null hypothesis for that f-test. Not all are 0. So that f-test for this model is identical to the f-test from the module 13 ANOVA. You can confirm that this ANOVA that we see here is exactly the same as the ANOVA that we saw in module 13. I don't have the results here to show you. You'll have to go back and look at those results from module 13 exercise. So the f-test in this regression is identical to what we looked at when we did the simple ANOVA back in module 13. Now, of course, you've also seen, as I discussed, some components of the Fisher's LSD. Because here, well, we're making those different pairwise comparisons. And so here I can also obtain those results for the Fisher's LSD. Now, in this exercise, we don't need to even think about Fisher's LSD because in this exercise, we fail to reject the null hypotheses. Our evidence here supports the null. We have no evidence to show that there's any statistically significant difference in the average number of hours spent studying between these three majors. So because our evidence here supports the null, I don't have to worry about Fisher's LSD. Our next exercise in this module will, will consider that. So hopefully we can see here how these are all connected. This regression using dummies with the module 13 ANOVAs. Now let's go through and just make sure we finish these off. So here we have 4.27 plus 4.03. Oops, I should put in our variables. 4.03, that's physics, minus 0.47, sociology. Now, remember what we talked about here. All of those point estimates. So this one here, we saw, well, the average for accounting, that must be given by our intercept, which was 4.27. Well, if we come down to our ANOVA data set, there we see x bar for accounting is 4.27. If we come back up here, I should see, well, the average, the point estimate of the average for physics is the average for accounting plus some deviation, either more than or less than those accounting students. Here I see that deviation is plus 0.03. And so 4.27, let's just write this down here. So this was 4.27. Now I have 4.27 plus 0.03. That gives me 4.3. I think there's probably a little bit of rounding error here. We'll be pretty close. And there's that 4.3, 4.31 because of some rounding error. And then up here for sociology, it's the average for accounting plus some deviation from that average. 
In this case, that deviation was negative 0.47. And so coming down here, 4.27 minus 0.47, and that gives me, I think I'll have a little bit of rounding error here as well, 3.8. And there we have 3.8. So everything is as we expect it to be. Of course, you can also find the point estimate of the difference between physics and sociology as well. And we've talked about how to do that in the previous exercises. All I need to do is take that estimate of either one of them. Let's take for physics, which is B0 plus B2 and subtract the difference of sociology, which is B0 plus, uh, oh, I made a mistake. This is plus B1, this is B0 and B2. So those intercepts cancel out. So this gives me 0.03 minus that negative 0.47. So that gives me 0.5. So this tells me that on average, physics students are studying half an hour longer than sociology students. So that's my point estimate of the difference between physics and sociology. Okay, so we've gone through, let's see, we've got part A, we've written our equation. Part B, so we've talked a little bit about what these coefficients mean. Let's just go through and be clear. So physics students, they study uh, 0.03 hours longer than accounting students on average. Sociology students, they study on average 0.47 hours less than accounting students. And here we've gone through and calculated that difference between physics and sociology is about half an hour. And physics students are studying about half an hour longer than sociology students. And we can go through the same for those intervals. I won't go through them here. We've talked about intervals a lot so far. And plus, nothing here is, is significant anyways. Our model is insignificant, and our individual variables are insignificant, which, of course, this is all consistent with that null hypothesis that there's no difference between the average amount of time that these three majors study. So that's about it for this exercise. Hopefully you appreciate the differences, but also perhaps more importantly, the similarities between what we've already done in those module 13 ANOVAs, and now we're applying this brand new methodology and we're obtaining precisely the same results. So, it's redundant, yes, but if you've got a good understanding of how these two are, are, are achieving the same objective through different means, well, then you really must have a good understanding of how they are working. Okay, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope this was helpful. Bye-bye.